Good morning, America. Hey, most glorious sunrise. Tenth and Orange, Coronado, California, 2022. The attic, like some Twilight Zone episode, transforms into Kid Pixie Radio, the only nuclear powered radio station on God's green earth. Your host is Elliot Rosewater. Al Graham has a podcast here called The Crystal Ship in honor of the great Jim Morrison. And uh, his books are sold here. Three books, Port Rain, Before the Beatles Were Famous, and I Remember Jim Morrison too, T-O-O, -O, which means 70 or 80 books were written about Jim Morrison. So when he wrote his book, I Remember Jim Morrison too, it was kind of tongue in cheek telling you that all the other books were limited because they had no information about the family inside, inside of the family. So this book, where is it? Well, must have sold them all out. <laughs> there are a few copies around here somewhere, but there's a bit of a surprise for those of you who know the history of Coronado and the history of Jim Morrison. Because behind Jim Morrison, I made a very special tribute to somebody who was also iconic. His name was Al Alberto Sandoval. He was a street artist. He drew, actually, he did sand drawings all over the streets, <laughs> everywhere you went. He was always getting tickets from <laughs> writing actually making beautiful art. He had a gift, he could, if he saw something in black and white, he could pretty much imitate it. But today, I wanna to show you something. That's a mural of Jim Morrison, six foot high. As a special tribute to the Sandman, I put him on the other side, there he is. His name was Avila, Albert Avila. And one day I took him down to the uh, salt uh, factory down on, uh, on the other side of the uh, Imperial Beach on this side, San Diego, and uh, a few miles from the border. And we took pictures of him doing his art in salt. <laughs> but he, he mostly did it in, in sand, but he did it, brought the sand from the beach and put it all over the sand. Everywhere he went, buckets, a bike, all kinds of tools. And he would just draw beautiful things. And then he, he got very ill and he went back to Texas and lived there for a couple of years with his family and he got cancer. And then some wonderful person in Coronado decided they were gonna bring him back for three weeks, let him live in a nice hotel and just have fun in his last days so he could draw you know, in his messages and of love and hope and peace and animals, huge animals and tigers and bears, oh my. And then he also had a little business that if you were sick, I would take him to your house and uh, he would like paint, get well in front of your house in the road. And then you, I'd have people look out, look out the window and there it would be when they woke up the next morning a beautiful tribute to them with their name and flowers and little joyful animals. And that was the man who did it. And he did it all with that little, look at that. He used to scoop sand into that little uh, dust catcher. And then he'd draw it with, it was like he would drool it all over. It. Perfect, perfect lettering. And, uh, Anyway, to, my, to make a long story sadder and longer was this. He came back to town. <laughs> of course, he was always getting a, a ticket for e every day almost. One day he had like 300 tickets. And finally some lawyer helped him and got, him, got rid of all the tickets, but he used to carry them around him proudly. And then a wealthy fellow who lived at the shores put a camera up, a 24 seven Sandman camera and it would film down below on the street and he would do art. It would go all over the world. It was a live cam. 
And then, uh, so he was quite famous. Everybody loved the Sandman. He, he'd go to your house and paint little messages for, for children on their birthday. And he was quite, he was good for tourism. He, he, he was down at the Hotel Dell a lot, out front in the, uh, between the shores and the Hotel Dell. It's all gun now, condos. But he would draw these huge 50 foot murals. And it was, or a tribute or whatever it was he was gonna do that day. He'd come down about two in the morning, <laughs> just like the old folks like me, come down at two in the morning. And then by when the sun came up like this, there would be magnificent mural right there. And everybody would walk by and love it. A few malcontents would say, oh, this is not Tijuana. This is not the inner city. It was beautiful. But the most ironic thing happened sad too his last week here before he went home to die he was ticketed by a certain policeman who shall remain nameless shame on you and he was he was so what's the word he was very sick it looked like he was dying but this policeman just had to give him a ticket for Oh, obstructing traffic or something because he was taking too long to do one of this. A minor offense meant nothing, but the wrath of the community, <laughs> of the community that befell that policeman. Uh, in fact, Albert came up to my house and right in the front, he named the copper that gave him the ticket and <laughs> cast aspersions on his entire lineage. And if... <laughs> You know what, you, people don't like their name in public and this guy, this cop got payback like he would not believe because everybody, he, he fully named him. <laughs> First and last name, gave me a ticket and people would go, ooh, every time they see that cop, shame on you, shame. <laughs> that cop, I don't know why that cop just did not let it go, but he didn't. And that, so that was the last thing he did for Albert, which was give him a ticket. Albert didn't care, <laughs> it didn't matter to him, but it was a, it was a kind of a like, uh, unnecessary. So, there he is, we had his teeth fixed. Actually, we didn't, we painted, when we got the painting made of him, like this mural, we <laughs> photoshopped his teeth, because they were, front teeth were gone, it was, black and rotten, but he didn't care. He'd be down working at the shores and I'd bring him his favorite burrito or taco or whatever it was and a drink. And he just was in bliss. In his world, in his art, he lived with his brother at the shores. And he had, he had a little tobacco, a little once in a while a beer. Not much, he didn't ask for much. And, uh, but people gave him tips and uh, he did all right. <laughs> he had a little uniform, like a little captain's uniform. One time I went into his house and he opened the closet and there were like 30 white shirts, <laughs> 30 pairs of pants. So he was, you know, he wasn't scruffy. And he had a tie, he made himself a uniform. Pretty enterprising. And there you have it. God bless you, Sam, and rest in peace. The last thing he said to me was, uh, he talked like this, hey, are you, hey, are you? He knocked at my door and go, hey, can I have a glass of water? My wife loved him and adored him. In fact, on Halloween, we, we got dressed up. I got dressed up as a cowboy priest and she got dressed up as a female sandman. She drew a mustache with a, <laughs> with a black magic marker, got a hat, <laughs> got black clothes, and she'd walk up to everyone and go, hey. <laughs> she imitated his voice. And, People loved it. So ironically, it's always sad, but it's also joyful because he's, he's up in heaven with the angels because one of his co-pilots, he said, hey, the angel said to, told me to come down here and do this. The angel said this, the angel said that. And so I said, well, how are you feeling, Sandman? As he was leaving, he said, hey, you know what? The angel said, you, are, you know, I got rid of you cancer, we cured it, and, and I said to the angel, okay, you take care of 70%, percent i take care of the rest. <laughs> so we went out in this wonderful 
what shall I say? State of mind. He really believed in his angels. They talked to him. They walked with him. They guided him. They kept him safe. And he really believed, like those of us who believe in angels, he was a true believer. Anyway, I did a few articles on him in my magazine. I'll, I'll reissue them just to keep him in, in our minds, but he'll never be forgotten because he's the other side of the coin to Jim Morrison. So when you come into this store here to look at Jim Morrison memorabilia or buy records or antiques, go around the back because the other side is the Sandman. <laughs> and there you have it. Al Graham for the Cape Pixie Radio Podcast. God bless America and God bless all of us.